to the very first episode of Warp Magic TV. I'm resident rookie Jonathan Grice, and with me in the studio is the cool father himself, Mr. Ian Moran. <laughs> also with us today, the man who makes routines look like child's play, is Mr. Chris Congreve. Oh, thank you, thank you. Was that too cheesy? Uh, well, little. Yeah. <laughs> As usual. Well, I'll change it a bit of a Chris. Yeah, yeah. To go yeah, play true. the team, we have Mr. Gary Jones, live via satellite. Hi, guys. Hope you're enjoying yourselves back in the studio. I'm stuck out here in Mauritius and I'm going to be here for another uh, two or three months. I'm looking forward to getting back to the studio and you guys doing the real world reviews. See you soon. Cheers. Thanks for that, Gary. And later on, we'll be chatting to our special guest, Mr. Mark James. Thanks for that, Mark. Don't be getting too comfortable in there. <laughs> So, first things first, why another internet magic channel? That, that's a good point, and I'm sure there's a lot of people out there thinking exactly the same thing. Um, let us just tell you a little bit about what this is going to be about and what it's not going to be about. Mm. It's not going to be a review programme, OK? Although there will be reviews in there. Um, it's not just going to be news, although there'll be news in there. What we're hoping for is something a little bit different, right, Ian? Yeah, it's like a magazine show, so a bit of everything in here. Hopefully some, some news, something you'll find interesting. And as Chris says, the latest reviews. We've got some special guests as well on the show. Show. Mark James coming up. Looking yeah. To that. All right, Mark. He's having a good time in there. I think he's asleep by the looks of it. Yeah, yeah. Which I think he is actually. Yeah. <laughs> Wake him up. You put him, show me your DVD. You know, I'll send him up. <laughs> you don't him up on that, will you? Yeah, yeah. Um, but the, the most interesting thing with, that we hope you're going to like uh, is we're going to be doing some of our reviews are going to be performed out there in what magicians like to call "with scary" the real world. Okay? Yeah. So it's going to be out there performing for real people um, in pubs and bars and everything else. Absolutely, because because you know what we think isn't really that important. You know we do get things wrong. What is important, of course, is whether lay people like the well, stuff. Well, there's really spectators like it. I mean, yeah. you need to enjoy performing it yourself to a certain extent. Yeah, of course. But sometimes I think you're right. You, you get caught up in what's a good um, magician's trick. Okay? Yeah. What's good for showing the mates down the magic club, yeah. um, and what's good for for, uh, for people who are seeing magic for sometimes the first time. Mm. Um, and of course we've got John, who's quite new to magic. So what what are you going to be looking for in the things that we reviewed? Um, just beginners to how easy it is to work, you know, whether it's you pick it up from uh, from a sort of novice point of view, looking at the trick, is it easy to pick up, is it easy to learn, is it easy to work, you know, yeah. how much effort do I have to put in, you know, the higher the marks really for me, the, you know, the easier it is to learn. All important things, and let's look at the review system, we've got a very, very simple system, haven't we? Yeah, we, we've decided to keep it really straightforward, uh, basically it's going to get a, a thumbs up or, or a thumbs down, okay, um, whether you like it or whether you don't. Now for me, I'm going to give things a thumbs up, um, if, if if I basically find it commercial, I'm going to be able to go out and perform it. Um, if I'm going to be able to do it at my gigs, because I, I, I do perform for money uh, and not that well. No, I, I also do stuff uh, at the pub and all the rest of it as well, which I, I realise a lot of you guys do. Um, so um, for, for me, it's all going to be about how um, how workable it is. Okay, so that'll be me. I mean, what, what about you? Ian? Yeah, you mine's things? mine's very similar. I, I mean, you know, there's a lot of tricks that are really really good, but uh, you know they wouldn't suit me to be able to use at a gig. If I can use it at a gig, that will. Get Get my seal of approval. Yeah. Very and, simple. And John, I mean, obviously, um, you, you've not done well, uh, many gigs yet, so yeah. so really, it's I mean, be... the same really. You know, from, uh, I'll be looking at, it, I'll be giving it a thumbs up. If somebody is a beginner, a relative beginner, do it, you know, six months or so, a better pick it up and not struggle with it. You know, not yeah. you know, seventeen phase routines, <laughs> things like that. Quite easy to do, easy to remember, and concentrate on the performance rather than how the actual yeah. workings of the trick. Yeah. Yeah, and, and, and obviously... I think as a beginner, I think that's, you know, what people sort of struggle with more is actually try to combine the performance with the actual, all the phases and what they've got to do and remember. And that comes with experience, yeah, absolutely, obviously. Absolutely. Um, but, um, you know, so uh, so we're going to be coming at it from a different angle, um, and obviously we're going to have Gary Jones, um, Mr. Jones, his input on this. Um, Twenty years as a professional, so uh, he's, he's got quite a few things to add to the mix as well. So that'll be good. Um, and also, we're going to be talking about what's going on in the in the magic world. Okay, so uh, internet buzz, um, conventions, and that kind of kind of thing. And with that in mind, uh, quite recently we had the FISM World Championships, <laughs> championships yeah. in this country. FISM in the UK, so fantastic, yeah, brilliant. Uh, I mean, I didn't get there myself. But you guys went yeah, up there. My first FISM. Yeah, yeah, it was uh, quite surprising. Uh, all the dealer stands were quite busy. There was a lot of buzz about. Yeah. <clears throat> so Michael 
Amaz, uh, lecture, brilliant, you know, lots of tips and things like that for me. Great convention, and, and of course, it was the two fantastic world champions in Yu Oh Jin mm -hmm. uh, and Jan Frisch, really well deserved, mm -hmm. incredible magicians. I wish, I wish I could have seen some of that actually, but what I would like to say is a big shout out oh. to, uh, to Matthew Wright, he's a friend of ours, yeah. and he came second in well the parlour. So, uh, well, joint, I should say, joint, joint second, second in yeah. the parlour, which, uh, which is a fantastic achievement. Yeah, so he's well, he is well, fantastic. Well done, Matt, and well deserved, I'm sure, fantastic stuff. Um, so, with all that said, uh, we're going to go to our first product review, yep. uh, which is the fantastic Chad Long's trick. Now look here. Uh, so, let's gonna, we're going to cut to the trailer and we'll be back with some thoughts shortly. Alright, here we go. Mmm. <laughs> Hi, my name is Chad Long and welcome to Now Look Here. I've had a lot of fun with this routine over the years and I hope you do too. Let's get started. Take out any card you want. I do not care. Seriously, I'm gonna. This one. This is. This is gonna work. You're gonna love this. Don't forget to show this guy. He gets very cranky if he's not included. You got it. Now I'll put your card about halfway down. Okay, just approximately. Now, uh, Kate, I don't have to find your card because when I snap my fingers, it jumps up to the top of the pack. Look in my pocket. Was that your card? No. Okay, that's of course it wasn't because it's over here in my pocket. Your card, the. Uh, Look on the table. Go ahead, check it out. Did we get it? Wait a minute. What's it? Look, look in my hand. Look in my hand. Here it is. Let's look in my hand. Over here, Kate's card. Now it's the Six of Clubs. The Kate Batsford card. Oh, mystery. <laughs> so that was the trailer for Now Look Here by Chad Long. Um, this is a trick that's been out for some time. It, uh, originally, it was in his, uh, his old lecture notes, the, uh, the cheesy... What I was think it? the Lost Cheesy Notebooks, I think, something like that, I think they were called. Um, so it's been around for a while, and what he's done, he's, uh, he's, he's packaged it together on a, on a produced DVD, um, and basically what you get is you get the DVD with the instructions, um, along with the cards that you're going to need for the performance. Um, now, I've got my own thoughts on this, which I'll say in a second, but uh, let me just go to you first, Ian. What did you think of uh, Now Look Here? I actually think it's an excellent trick. I mean, it's a very commercial piece. I should point out that Chad released this originally a few years ago. I think I think Doc Eason released it for him with the cards and the instructions with a couple of handlings. It's nice now this comes with a DVD. You can actually see Chad performing it in front of you know a live audience. Um, I do like the trick. I like it a lot. Um, there are limitations. Um, you need a, you need a, a, table. You need yeah. a table. You need a there's, a there's a setup on top of the deck. I have to say it's a very small setup. It's a small setup. It's, it's, but, it's quite it's quite straightforward. But, yeah. but, it, but it's specific. Um, the the audience obviously needs to be close enough to be able to see the writing on the cards um, and obviously need to be able to understand English. Um, that said, I actually do think it's a good trick. Um, I also think, and this is not a plug, but I, I do think um, another version, if you like this trick, um, Gary Jones has got a version I think called Shameless Kickback plug. 52, Shameless, Shameless plug, plug <laughs> on the DVD that the you and Gary did called um, Joker versus, what was it, what was it called? 52 Chris? versus Joker, yeah. Easy it's really some big, blum, big blind media. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, so um, I've got to say, I, I, I absolutely love this. I think it's fantastic. I've performed this um, at gigs, and it does get a fantastic reaction. Mm. Okay, um, it, it's easy to do. It's easy to follow. Um, when when you sort of start playing around with the cards yourself, you might think it's a bit difficult um, mm. for the audience to follow what's going on, but not at all. Um, it's not it's, a trick for drunks, though, is it? Um, well, that rules out most of my audience, I suppose. <laughs> um, but. Uh, Having said that, there, there are a couple of sites in there, so uh, with that in mind, I'm going to hand over to our, our resident newbie. Um, John, how did you get on with the, uh, the slopes? I mean, the, one of them being a top change, mm. uh, which, you know, it's not an easy move to pull off. Yeah, I think yeah. he's got some good handlings on there, you yeah. know, quite easy, you know, some good tips on how to actually get the, to get mean, the trip he's on. Very, he's very slick, isn't yeah, he? But he does slick. teach it very well. Yeah, and he, do, and he does go into details. I think the DVD is um, it's meant for beginners and professionals yeah. alike. I yeah. think, you know, if you're a beginner, you could yeah. pick that up. With a bit of work, you could do it. As you say, the top change, um, obviously, I'm working on my top change, but there's so much misdirection in the trick when they're looking right. at the table. You can yeah. literally just swap them over. That's, and you, you well get team, it That's what I like about this: is it, is it gives people the, the scope to go out and learn a top yeah, change. Yeah, um, it's like if you're learning how to palm yeah, a card. Yeah, the best way yeah. to do it is when somebody's not looking. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So mm. uh, when I first started palming a card, I, I used a routine um, that was in the Royal Road to Card Magic, where basically they're turning the card over on the table when yeah. you're palming yeah. the top yeah, card. Anything, absolutely. Um, so, so um, yeah, I, I, I think I think that for a beginner. You know, with with some work, you would yeah. be able to do this. I mean, I'd have no problem going out 
bomb in that. You know, after looking at it, you know, maybe an hour or something like that. Absolutely. And I, I think just going back to that, I think it'll it'll make me practice the top change, and can, that can only get better. And the, the reaction. I mean, what I like about it, right, is, is you get this, um, and a lot of my magic, I, I, I do this way, um, is you've got this sort of this thing going yeah. on where the spectators look in there, yeah. watching like there, a tennis looking match. Looking there. It's a great moment. Um, a lot of kickbacks yeah. going on. Yeah. But, yeah. Um, so that's my kind of magic. So that, that's why I. I mean, the final phase like when they look up in the cards, there it's like you know, you can't believe. It. Well, it's so far away, isn't it? Yeah. Um, but having, having said all that, our, uh, our resident seasoned professional, uh, Mr. Gary Jones, has been out and performed this um, to a pub full of. Um, <laughs> uh, 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 Chris's mates. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, no. no, it was performed in one of my local uh, drinking establishments. Um, uh, and let's uh, let's have a look at Gary performing this to a real audience who we hadn't met before. Honest. What I'm going to show you, this is not really a trip as such, it's this based on misdirection psychology. It's a codger. <laughs> but if you like to just reach in and take any one of these cards. Wow. Don't let me see it. Open up the card, please, and would you show it to the camera? Have you done that? I don't need to know what that card is, even where that card is. So I'm going to find it through misdirection by making you look away. So you looked away at that moment there. I stick the card right to the top of the pack, and would you believe your card is... Oh. So it's, uh, look inside my pocket. Fingertips. One card inside my pocket. Ah. Turn it over. Yeah, turn it over. Oh, it's off my hand. Is this your card? It is. Thank you. Thank you. So that was Gary performing Now Look Here for a live audience, and it pretty much backs up what we've said. It's a really strong Definitely. trip, right? Absolutely. And uh, do you know what I really, really liked was uh, was Gary's presentation for, yeah. for the routine. I thought that lifted it, to be honest. It's a nice I talk. liked it anyway. And then when I saw what Gary had done with the, uh, you know, this is going to be done by misdirection. Actually um, telling people how it's done right. And, yeah. and then saying, well, actually, it's a card trick. You know, yeah. a, a yeah, bit yeah, of yeah, humour. Yeah, yeah. And that just shows what you can, you know, you can yeah. almost take any trick and, and um, albeit with this, a good trick. And, and make it better, you and know. And the expressions so, uh, when the when the last phase when you reveal that card, yeah. fantastic, yeah, really. it's it's nice, fantastic. Yeah, um, so. Uh, uh, before we give it the uh, the final marks, uh, just say that uh, this is available um, all good magic shops. Um, it's less than twenty quid. Yes, um, fifteen, sixteen pounds, yeah. I think. Yeah, um, and with that you get the DVD, full instructions, um, two variations yeah. uh, on how the tricks performed, and also you get the, obviously the cards uh, to perform it I as well. I think just one thing to bear in mind is when they're ordering to make sure they pick the right red or blue back deck as well. Oh yeah, good points, good yeah. point. All other, you know, later on once you've bought the trick, you can get the cards. Um, you can buy sort of. Uh, the cards again yep. uh, for, for quite quite cheaply so you'll be able to sort of uh, replace those once they've worn out and the, the you know the, the, the damage deck okay so uh, having said all that oh, i think it's time for our, our marks okay so john thumbs up from me yeah thumbs up yeah. from me definitely use it and thumbs up from me well that's the first seal of approval and i think it might be time to bring on our first ever special guest he was a feature performer on Wayne Dobson's A Life in Magic, as well as his own two-disc DVD set, Supercharged Classics. It's Mr. Mark James. Hey. Hey. Welcome. Hi. Like the sound of applause. Oh, yes. amazing! You're not used to that in your act, are you, mate? Thanks. Well, way to start. <laughs> oh, sorry, sorry. A special guest. Uh, he's not very good, no, but there no, he is. Amazing. Well, the, the, I've got to be honest. The reason we got you in as our first special guest um, is just to prove that we're not actually the same person. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, Mark, how are you doing? I'm all right. Thanks, all right? mate. Yeah, good. Yeah. Nice to see you guys. Uh, yeah, yeah, you're doing well. Um, you're, you're popping up all over the internet at the moment, sort of doing wine options, tricks, and uh, that's right. Working, working on anything yourself at the minute, or? Uh, not, uh, yeah, I don't know, it's a tough one that, isn't it, because you, it's hard to balance doing stuff for magicians and then doing real work, where you actually get money. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, yeah. Money. you've got a family to pay for and stuff. Yeah, yeah, no, I don't yeah. know, yeah, I'm working on a few things, there's always something on the back burner, but I never know when I'll put it out. Yeah. Yeah, uh, brief, yeah, and uh, yeah. So uh, since I saw you last, become a dad. Is that going? I have indeed. Yeah, it's going really well. It's uh, it's amazing. Yeah, I got a little boy. He's uh, seven months, and he's uh, yeah. I've managed to keep him alive so far. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's <laughs> which is that's all uh, I have to do. Just shows I need to see him more often. Obviously, seven that's months. Right. I can't believe it. Um, so we, we've got a few questions that we wanted to ask you today, Mark. I hope you're okay with that. I am indeed. Yeah. Yeah. So the first question: um, Who is your favourite magician? Um, 
Well, obviously, Ian Moran is my favourite magician, probably the, the best, um, the, my favourite one. Uh, as far as magicians that have inspired me go, I, I, it's tough to have one favourite. Uh, obviously, back in the days of JB Magic, I worked in that shop for a little while, and uh, I learned a lot from Mark Mason and his DVD set kind of shaped the, the way that I perform now. Mm -hmm. And the tricks that I do were all tricks from that DVD set. Originally, that was my working set. Um, and his humour and everything, I often get told at lectures, you know, it's obvious that I've worked for him and things like that. Um, outside of that, I like a lot of the newer guys that are coming through, David Stone, Matthew Dowd and people like that, I really enjoy watching. One, one, one thing that, that, that's obvious to me straight away is everybody you've named there is an entertainer, um, as well as a good magician, okay, so that obviously yeah. that's important to you, yeah? I think it's funny this because this gets talked about on the forums a lot and I don't want to get in that slippy slope where you say, oh, it's important to be entertaining and not be good at magic. I don't think being entertaining takes the place yeah. of magic. No. Mm -hmm. I just think it's nice if you've got a really funny or nice personality and you're really good at doing tricks. You, you can do both, absolutely. Yeah, definitely. Um, but so, so, yeah. Um, it's unusual though, isn't it? I mean, you, you know, it is just one or the other. I remember when I, when I saw your show, not only was it very, very funny, it also that's, actually had some really, really good magic in it. That's what obviously you're talking about, a stand-up show, yeah. which is, it's, yeah, it's funny because obviously all the guys I named then as well are close-up magicians, yeah. Yeah. Um, which I think is what most people try to be interested in now. It's hmm. certainly more accessible. Is that not because there's less opportunities for people to perform stand-up magic these days, though? Uh, probably, yeah, I would say so. It's very It's very competitive. There's not a lot of people doing it. It's very difficult to get into. Um, I make my living solely from stand-up comedy yeah. magic, you know, people, now. Uh, I guess a lot of people don't know, know that about you. Um, yeah, yeah, that's know. when you've got DVDs or whatever, they're on close-up. Yeah. Everyone yeah. thinks that's what you do, but I probably do 10 close-up gigs a year, wow. you know, which really? is mm -hmm. obviously the same as Ian, but he does it as a full-time job. <laughs> <laughs> here we go, here we go. Yeah. 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 Well, gigs have opened. Yeah. Do well, we've got two okay. minutes in and you've already started. Yeah. Actually, yeah. Ian is a big inspiration of mine. I brought some stuff from home that, uh, <laughs> from the office. Whenever I'm working on some trips or I'm doing a gig, I like to have some, some things. Um, I've got a picture of him. <laughs> I've got a picture of him working. Was that from your bedside uh, this cabinet? Is, this one's from the bedside table, yeah. I like to have a nice big picture of him. <laughs> what I like about this picture is that this waiter is clearly checking out Ian's bum. <laughs> Which is a nice, I, I've noticed in the past you've got a nice bump. So I like, that's a nice picture of being working. I like to have that one on the bedside. Um, I take this one to gigs with me. Um, this one, oh this, is Ian doing a, this is Ian doing a rope trick. Oh You'll notice God. there it says, I'm Levine at the top, amazing Ian, because Ian's amazing. Um, so that's him doing a bit of cabaret, because I do a bit of cabaret and I like to sometimes pretend I'm Ian Moran when I'm doing it. So that's a good one. I also, um, this is a nice one, because I like his smile on this, it's getting quite. <laughs> Some quite a lot of laughs there, and also you can see this guy is kind of leaning oh round to see his bum. Yeah, you know, that? So that's two different people checking out Ian's bum. <laughs> You've got way too much time on your hands, Mark, to do this. I can't believe it. Well, I'm not finished. This oh, one's no. my favourite. Look at the smile on this. That's dynamite, isn't it? So there's Ian on a little. So I like to. Is this your full collection, Mark? Or yeah, that, well, I've got more at home. home, but obviously I only had a small yeah. bag today, yeah. so I don't want to cover them up. Uh, I love the fact that there's dust all over that one as well. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot more on that one than dust. But, uh... <laughs> okay, so moving swiftly on from yeah, your favourite yeah. Please, please, let's do that. So what? Like, yeah. <laughs> what? What is... Just, I, mean, I don't want dust on his face. Very good. <laughs> Thanks, Mark. What, what, what is your favourite trick? <laughs> um, let's, get, let's get rid of these, shall we, please? Well, um, yeah, I'm going to keep it. Let's, let's get rid of that. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, Mark, what's your favourite trick? Um, a stage trick wise, I. Um, <laughs> It's the, probably what I remember when I was a kid watching probably the Paul Daniels Magic Show or something like that, and he used to always have guest entertainers on. Yeah. And um, I really enjoyed... Enjoy that one point. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, the thing that sticks in my head as being a kid and seeing magic is multiplying balls. Someone doing billiard balls, to me, is like... It's the same as someone producing a single back palm card. It's mm. like, uh, to me, that's the most magical thing, because I remember that as a kid. And I remember having a conversation with you where you said that your thing from being a kid and going to a kid's party was linking rings, and yeah. that yeah, yeah. sticks in your head. Is obviously their classics, but I think that's a good way to go. Mm. Um, and if you could, if you saw my stand-up show, which Ian has, there's a lot of classic tricks in there, but with contemporary Absolutely. feel to them. Absolutely. I mean, you know, you do the snowstorm, you do the linking rings, the razor blades, I mean, straight jacket straight escape, jacket, these yeah. are all... This is and I do billiard balls and that as well, yeah. you know, and it's, but in totally different ways, I think, to 
how they've been done before. But, yeah. there's, but, there's definitely food for thought there, though, isn't there, guys? That, um, you know, people are always looking for the, the, the late, latest miracle, or they're looking for mm. a trick that's going to make them successful. When, yeah. when what you've done is you've you've, 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 you've taken classic tricks yeah. um, and put your own personality on them and made them you, which I think is important. You know? what, what do you prefer, Matt? Do you prefer the stand-up or do you prefer the close-up? Oh, I massively prefer stand-up. Yeah. Right. Why, why is that? What's the what's the reason? Lazy. And it'll do twenty lazy. minutes. Yeah. Yeah. Paid once. <laughs> it doesn't feel like as much work really the mm. hardest part of a gig to me is starting mm. like when you go over to the table and you've got to win them over your personality yeah, or whatever yeah. and in a close-up gig you've got to do that 12 times in a night yeah, yeah. is that really Whereas, the reason though is that, is that genuine, oh yeah yeah definitely we're on a stand-up gig if you've got a good five minutes at the beginning it's going to be a good gig mm. and you can relax mm. and i also feel quite personally feel uncomfortable at the point where they're eating the main course on yep. a close-up gig and you're standing there with a deck of cards yeah. or whatever in your hand well, and you're not working and I feel like the booker, even though I explain it to them, yeah. is looking over thinking, why isn't he why doing is any work? Yeah, yeah, and yeah. I feel like I don't really feel food, yeah. Yeah. Just flip that back at you for a second. If you do it, if, if that's the case, and, and I, I mean, I do cabaret as well and I do agree with what, what you're saying on the whole. Um, the only flip side of that is if you have a bad table and you don't establish yourself well in the first five minutes, yeah. you, you, you've got another table to have a go at, all right? Um, if you're doing a stand-up show and, and let's call, let's say that you die in the first five minutes, yeah, that's it. It's game over. You haven't got another chance. I mean, everybody's dying. Has that ever happened? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, how do you handle that? You know, so from going to that, you just just yeah, just pass out, pretend to lie on the floor. Over it. I mean, yeah. it, at first, it's really hard. Whenever you tell anyone you do stand-up, anyone who isn't a magician, the first question is always, well, what happens if you get heckled? You know, to people who mm. aren't performers, they imagine that's the worst conceivable thing that's that can happen. Fear, isn't it? It's not heckled. actually that bad. You mm. get heckled. Well, I've, I've seen you get heckled. Well, if you, have, yeah. you can have a bit of banter with them, can't you? You heckled me, didn't you? No, it was me, yeah. No, <laughs> have you really? Thing, yeah, no, no, no. The, the great thing is when, I, when you were heckled, you dealt with it straight away. You came up with a really funny line. Yeah. Actually, it actually added to the show. But if, if you died on stage and everything's quiet and everybody's just looking at you, that's totally different to being heckled, isn't it? You, know, you yeah. can come back with heckling, can't yeah. you? Now, the funny yeah. thing about it being quiet, if everyone's quiet and not laughing, that's very disconcerting. Yeah. Yeah. But it's not as bad as people just talking over you. Right. You know, mm. people just ignoring quiet. you. In the main part, apart from at the end of the punchline, in your mind, you can imagine it's actually going well because mm. a good gig is silent mm. apart mm. from the laughs. Whereas mm. if they just all talk, it feels like a battle and you can feel yeah. yourself start yeah. sweating yeah. and it's really, it's, it's, it's awful. It's not great. I mean, I, I did the camps for, for one season and uh, I must admit, I, you know, it's not great. And they put you in these big rooms where there's 1,200 people and stuff. Yeah. I remember the one I did, um, it was horrendous and, and there was like, like I said, there was a thousand people and I walked in and they've got the kids doing, you know, you know, the kids do, um, uh, a talent competition, yeah. right? So they've got their own children on stage and the audience just talked over them. Oh. And I thought, this is going to go well tonight. And do you know yeah. what, Mark? <laughs> oh, no, I died. I died, <laughs> I died on my backside, yeah. Yeah, it can be, it can be pretty awful. It's, uh, it's, you know, but if you can't handle that, it's not the job yeah. for you, no, you know. No, you've got to be resilient. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. You drive home in the car, you know, it's very lonely. It's very, I think being a performer can be very bipolar as an existence mm. because it's, Obviously, bipolar, you know, it's either it's, it's highs and lows in the extreme. And that's exactly what happens at a gig. You know, you can be in mm. front of a thousand people. They all love you. It's amazing. But no matter how well the gig goes, five minutes later, you're in the car by yourself. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah, you know, you're just driving back and it's very up and down. It is. And you've it's got strange. to be tough emotionally, I think, mm. to, to deal with that all the time. Mm. The hardest thing, I mean, now... Um, I do a lot of sort of cruise ships and stuff as well, and that's my main living in stand-up. I'm away a lot of the time. And not only if you have a bad gig do you die that night, but you've got to live with them for a week as well. <laughs> so, no escape. Yeah, the first first cruise I ever did, it was on uh, on a very well-known cruise company called Saga, and they're all, as everyone knows, they're very old. Saga, yeah. You've got those, don't you, Chris? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> on holiday. That's where I met you. Yeah. yeah that was our first uh, date, in fact. <laughs> Well, they've, they've, you know, they say that they've got to be 65 plus, they're normally 70, 80 plus, and wow. it's a very tough crowd. Pretending they're young, 65s. Oh, no, they don't. There's, there's no, like, there's, there's no, what's it called, get up and go. Or yeah. It's a tough crowd. Wow. And the first time I ever did one, I died in the show, and the next day I just couldn't leave my room. Uh, I was, like, ordering room service food. I didn't dare leave the cabin. And then when you do leave the cabin, you know, literally, it's unbelievable. You walk past the table and people 
sort of look away because oh, no. they don't want to talk to you. Sure. You're like a leper as well. But when it goes great, nobody leaves you alone. You're yeah. having your dinner, and every two minutes someone's coming over. And so it's there, there was a, a magazine um, out in the nineties called The Conjury. You probably don't remember this, but I'm sure you remember it. Yeah, yeah, Dave Jones, Dan Jones yeah. Um, and Sean Carpenter, who, who was a fantastic magician, mm -hmm. and he wrote. Do you remember? The, he wrote. A, he wrote a series of articles all about working on cruise ships, right. um, mm -hmm. and they were all for, for that type of audience, and uh, they were really funny. And some of the things that you're talking about there, I mean, absolutely. Yeah. Amazing, so yeah, I'll dig that out. You can have a look at it. Quite good. <laughs> okay, so let's move on to our next question, then, mate. Um, so what's the most embarrassing thing that's ever happened to you while you've been performing? Okay, I've well, got the funniest thing performing magic heard. as well, man. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's important. Yeah, yeah. I've, had, no I've got two. Um, okay. one of them happened about five years ago, and one of them happened five days ago. Um, <laughs> The, the one in a few years ago, I used to do kid shows. I mean, uh, it's funny, really, because kids entertainers get a bit of a bad rep sometimes, you know, mm. it's not as good as proper magic, but yeah. it really is. I mean, doing a kid show is much harder than anything else. And really also, a lot of kids entertainers are out there not messing about with a wand for 20 minutes. You know, I, I hear kids entertainers all the time say, oh, I can get 20 minutes out of that wand, and I think, well, is that good? Mm -hmm. now, to me, that's a bad thing. Mm -hmm. If I was doing kids' shows now, and I didn't know this then, but I probably would do multiplying balls and, you know, mm -hmm. proper magic, mm -hmm. because like you said, it hooked you on magic, seeing a magician do proper tricks. And it is, yeah. the bits of business and stuff are funny, but it's nice to have some proper magic in there as well. But I mean, I used to do, you know, getting 20 minutes out of a wand. <laughs> anyway, moving anyway, back I, to the story. I, I don't really know a lot about it, but... I was in the show and I was booked for a six-year-old girl's birthday party and um, the mum rang me on the way there and she said, oh, a lot of her friends can't come, so it's not going to be as busy. So I've told her brother that his friends can come. I said, how old are they? And she said, well, they're 12. So six-year-old girls and 12-year-old boys is a nightmare combo for a kid's party. But at the time, um, Tesco's were doing this deal on pinatas, you know, the horse thing that you tie up and you smash it the sweets fall out. And they, so they were doing them, so I thought, this will be good. So I bought one of those. I set off to the gig, I thought, this is going to rock. I tie it up, it's in a sports centre, I've forgotten the stick, but it's because it's a sports centre, I get this hockey stick, and the kids are whacking this piñata, it's amazing. Finally, the piñata splits open, and that was the exact moment I found out you have to put the sweets in them yourself. <laughs> So the thing's blow was nothing came out, it's totally empty. I'm sure there's something else that you're thinking on your feet. How, how, did, how did you get out of that one? Well, I said, there was a lot of parents, their faces mm. were amazing. And I said, um, I said oh, obviously no sweets have fallen out, but uh, that's because of health and safety. Um, you're not allowed to put sweets anymore, it's too dangerous. So now what happens is the person who manages to split it open gets the big prize. And I always took a pass the parcel to fill a bit of time, so I grab the pass the parcel and I give it to this kid, he's 12. And I say to him, don't open that yet, wait until you get home, because <laughs> all your mates will be well jealous. For two reasons, firstly, I knew it would take about an hour, because it was wrapped up 15 times. <laughs> And secondly, it had a girl's hair braid in <laughs> <laughs> So, so, so he, he was uh, chuffed when he so, got home. And so what happened five days ago then? Five days ago, I got booked by this college to do uh, <laughs> some magic workshops. <clears throat> and uh, Ian knows, but Ian's involved in this story actually. <laughs> I, uh, I'm booked to do this college, and they say they want a workshop at half nine in the morning, a workshop at half two in the afternoon, and then a cabaret on the night. And each workshop's going to have 90 people in it. So I turn up on the morning, I get there, and we're walking through the thing. And as I see the name of the college, which is all I've been told so far, it says underneath European Languages Specialists. And I think. <laughs> Oh, this is good, they're all learning European languages, it's nice, isn't it? So I get into the thing and it's in this little kind of uh, gym dance room and they all look very European and I thought, uh, I said, well, so where, where is everyone from? And he said, oh, they're all from Italy. I said, do they speak any English? He went, mm, not really. <laughs> I thought, oh my God, this is going to be a nightmare, I've got an hour to teach tricks to... 90 people who are not really going to understand what I'm saying. And they didn't understand anything. It was awful. So I call Ian up, because uh, I don't know if you know this, but Ian, Ian lectured in Italy, was it five or six years ago? About 10 years ago. Yeah. About 10 years ago. And Ian, because he's a genius, you know, <laughs> learnt uh, in about five months to speak Italian. When he did really? his lecture yeah. in Italian. Not, not brilliantly, but... Uh, so I thought this would be good. He can't speak English brilliantly, so I'll have a press <laughs> point. It's trying to muddle through. <laughs> so I, uh, I, I ring Ian, and Ian teaches me how to speak Italian, how to say, hi, my name's Mark, I'm going to do magic for you, how to say the names of all the playing cards, the values, the suits, everything. We did it all, didn't we? Yeah, it was great. Yeah, yeah. I knew that uh, Donna de Pique, Queen of Spades, I got it all, I'm spot on. I, I know all the cards. So I walk into the room for the second class, I said, so you guys are Italian. I said, no, the other class is Italian, we're Spanish. <laughs> 
Not a word, not a word of uh, English would they speak again, so I muddled through another hour. And then that night I had to do cabaret for half oh, English, uh, half Spanish, half Italian, and he'd said he would sort me out a microphone and a PA. And the PA was hooked through the room, but he'd forgotten the microphone, so he went and oh. found one. And you know when you get a kid's karaoke set, yep. and it's a mic that weighs nothing, and it's on a lead about that long. So I've got the PA literally <laughs> here, and the cord is tight around my body with the mic stand, and I'm right in there leaning with the PA on my leg, trying to do all my tricks without leaning it in my case. That was a, it was awful. Totally horrible, horrible Best gig then, ever. Yeah. Best gig ever. Yeah. And then at the end, I said... Uh, Cheers for that, and he paid me, and he said, so I'll give you a call next year. I said, yeah. 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 <laughs> I, I won't be available. Oh, I, just... I, lo I love it when they say that. The worst gig you've ever done, I've had that myself. <laughs> yeah. You think it's, it can't go any worse, and they say, yeah, I'll be in touch next year. <laughs> the, th the thing I always find weird when that happens is when I do a, a table, I mean, we're all adults, you know, it, you do quite a lot of adult jokes at the table, and if I go over to a table of women, you know, I do the whole thing. I mean, obviously, this will get called cheesy when people talk about this chat on the forums, but the whole, you know, put your hand out, raise it up an inch, or if that's an inch, you've got no worries, and did you three come together? Well, I'd love to have seen that, and all them sort of jokes. Yeah, yeah. I do all that stuff, and at the end, they go, oh, my kids would love you. <laughs> Brilliant. I think, would they? Yeah. Would they really? It, it, it's funny that, when people say things like that, you know, you, you do all your best close-up magic, and you think you've really blown them wine, they come up to you afterwards and say, did you do kids' part? Yeah, yeah. the kids loved it. Yeah. Um, so, um, right, last question then, okay. and, then, and then we'll get you to do a trick. Um, what is your favourite joke? Okay, tell us your favourite joke. Keep it clean though. Okay, yeah, come on. Knock, knock. Who's there? there? The impatient cow. The impatient cow. Moo! Come on. Moo! 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 Anyway. That leads us on to our final review of this week's show. <laughs> yeah. Let's have a look at the trailer for audio transposition. I'm sorry, I've let you down. <laughs> If you have ever wanted to perform a magic trick that is totally unique and novel, audio transposition is for you. In addition to being a great trick, a natural presentation is automatically built in. Now, of course, you could present it any way you want, but here's how I like to do it. People often ask me how long I've been performing magic, and I tell them I've been doing magic as far back as I can remember. In fact, I still remember my very first trick. I was just a baby at the time, playing in my playpen with my two favorite toys. Oh, my rattle. I love my rattle. And my second favorite toy was my little squeaky squeeze ball. I used to have hours of fun with this little puppy. Oh, memories, great memories. Well, one day I was squeezing my squeeze toy, rattling my rattle at the same time, making a lot of noise, and my mother called in from the other room. Daryl, daddy's trying to sleep, quiet. Well, I still wanted to play with my toys, but I couldn't make any noise. That's when I decided to perform my first mystery. I took the little squeaky sound out of the squeeze toy. I took the rattle sound out of the rattle and I made the sounds disappear. Now this means I could squeeze my squeeze toy all I wanted, it wouldn't make a sound. Exactly the same with this. I could shake my rattle for hours on end, wouldn't make a sound. Well then of course my dad woke up and I could make all the noise I wanted to. That's when I decided to take the rattle sound and the squeaky squeeze sound, throw them back into the toys. And I did, but of course remember, I was just a baby. I didn't remember which sound came from which toy, so accidentally I put the rattle sound into the squeeze toy, the squeaky sound into the rattle. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. So that was the trailer for Daryl's audio transposition effect, um, which is here. That, that's, that's a new old effect, if you like. It was something he had in his lecture notes years ago, um, and he's took the trouble and the time to, to put all the props together and uh, package everything there. So. Yeah, I think in his notes, obviously, had to make all the props yeah. yourself. It was just all here, ready, ready to go, really. Ready to go, yeah. So, uh, Mark, what, what, did, what do you think of it? Um, would I use it on a close-up gig? Probably not. Is it an interesting idea? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. It's, uh, I don't think every trick that comes out has to be something that's immediately workable, you know? Yeah, not everything is fits in your pockets, reset at the end, and things tend to get a bit panned or slagged off for that. And it's no reason to slag off a trick, because everything has its place yeah. in somebody's set at some point, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, my favourite place to do close-up is in a sort of parlour show situation, 
and I often do cups and balls and things like that. Now, to me, cups and balls is unworkable at a table, yeah, but totally. in close up with a formal audience sitting, it's perfect, and I think that's where this has that, its place. That could fit in in the middle of a, of a formal set, couldn't it? Absolutely, yeah. Um, it's a, and it maybe as well as in a kid show because it's using sort yeah. of you know kids I mean, props in a way. You, probably, you, you certainly wouldn't close with it, would you? Really? And, and I don't think you'd help them with it either. But you certainly no. put it in the middle. It's a nice sort of on the journey type thing. Yeah. yeah. What are your thoughts, mate? Yeah, I mean it, it is venue specific, as, as you guys have said. It's not something you do walk around. But I mean, I and I'm sure you guys do as well. Often do um, gigs where it's like one table. You know, there's, there's like about ten people. Yeah. yeah. And you've got half an hour to certainly to, by the end. So certainly by the end. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you see my act, haven't you? <laughs> so it's nice to have something that's a bit different, um, you know, uh, it's, it's not the most spectacular magic trick in the world, no, but it's a nice different effect, I like I th it. I, mm. I think the idea is there to be expanded upon though for something yeah, else, that, that whole thing mm. of transposing audio I think is a, a brilliant concept, nice and, guess, I mean Arthur Trace, uh, an American, mm. uh, I, I think he's one Magic Castle stage magician of the year, I'm not, I wouldn't quote me on that, but he's very good and he has a trick where he takes a, uh, a ringing bell and he does a chalk up sort of thing with it where he unscrew he rings it and he unscrews the bell and he puts it in his hand and it's he's doing this and there's no noise and then when he opens his hand and it's vanished, this immediately starts oh, ringing nice. again. Oh, and that whole that. thing yeah. of doing magic that's audio or yeah. you know, things like that I think is cool. It, it's it's mm. um, I mean in this country most gigs are a sort of banquety type situation yeah. or yeah. when we're talking about working so Again, it's not going to work there because it's too, they're too loud, aren't they? Um, yeah. I mean, what about you, John? Uh, looking at it from a sort of newbie sort of I, th I mean, I literally opened it ten minutes later, knew how to do it. Very, very simple to do. There's just one little thing you've got to get right as you play out of the bag, which obviously will get explained. Yeah. Uh, but if you get that wrong, you've lost the trick. But apart from that, yeah, it's great. I think it's good for kids. I mean, for, for my part, when, when I first started out, I used to perform a lot of uh, family restaurants like TJ or Friday's mm, yeah. and Gito's, yeah. which I know you have. Now, I could see me using it there. Perfect. I don't do them type gigs anymore. You don't yeah. think you get issues with noise in the restaurant, with too, no too noisy to touch the hair, the no, rattles because, and things. because when you're working in a restaurant, you're very, very close, yeah, yeah. Um, and you're right in there. The space. tables are almost their own yeah, environment, yeah. aren't Absolutely, yeah. it's, it's their own environment. So for mm. me, that is the sort of, you know, that is, I, w I would possibly use it somewhere like that. Um, so Certainly, I wouldn't use it at a gig. You wouldn't do the corporate gig either. Obviously, no. you're not, you wouldn't bring out stuff like you know, yeah, no. for the right audience, the right situation. Yeah, I, I think. Yeah. I mean, it's, you know, it's definitely a good product. It's well put together. I mean, it's a little on the price. It's expensive. Side as well. It's about 40, 40 something pounds, isn't it? So I think also there's pocket space if you're going round. You know, you've got to carry yeah, around yeah, a yeah. bag and things. If, if the tricks. I'd rather have uh, Matt James's chop cup in my hand instead. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> exactly. exactly. Mm. Well, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. I, yeah, I mean, I, I don't want carrying stuff around as long as I'm going to use it. So, I, I mean, yeah. Having said all that, um, we did get our roving reporter, Mr. Gary Jones, out performing it um, live. So uh, let's have a look at Gary's performance and uh, see if that can sway it a little bit in, our, uh, in Maybe. his favour. Okay, so uh, let's have a look at Gary out there performing for, in the real world. I'd like to show you the very, very first trick I ever learnt. And this was when I was a baby. I was only 18 months old. I had a rattle. Did you all have a rattle? Yeah. Yes. Yes, you did. And the other thing I had it was a... one of these. A squeaky, squeaky ball. Okay, listen. And the first trick I ever did was to make them vanish. Not the actual ball and the rattle. But the sounds, watch, if I do this, if I take away the rattle and take away the squeak, gone. Which means no rattle, no squeak. I know, spooky, spooky. But then I made a mistake. When I went to put them back together again, I grabbed the rattle and I grabbed the squeak and I crossed them over and did this. Because what actually happened was I ended up with a squeak over here and a rattle over there. <laughs> Thank you very much, thank you. Thank you. So that was Gary performing Daryl's audio transposition. So uh, any, any different views on this now? You've seen Gary do it? Um, well, I thought Gary performed it really well, actually. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm tainted by the fact that it's Gary. I like watching him do anything, yeah. you know. He's very charismatic performer and yeah. stuff, but yeah. I, I still feel the same about the trick. I think in that environment that he performed it, that wasn't necessarily its place. You know, the reactions no. were okay. They were okay, yeah. And that's with Gary doing it. So, you know, I think maybe... Yeah, actually got a slightly better reaction than I thought in actual fact. Yeah. Um, yeah, don't you think? 
And uh, well, I, I, I like the trick, so you know, yeah, I, mean, I, 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 thought, I, like I thought I thought it would play well. And my only concern about it, as I said earlier, and I've, it's still the same concern, is where you're going to perform it, really. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I like the premise, and, and I like the. Uh, For me, it's the kids. I would say. You, you think yeah. so? I mean, yeah, I, I would, I, but personally, I don't know whether I, uh, kids would. I think I think it's good. it's place for me. if I personally did it in a cabaret show or something like that or in a parlour show, it would be an intro thing where I would say, as a kid, I was always interested in the sounds things made, and mm -hmm. you know I worked out even as a kid that I could take the sound from this and swap them over now, and you know, and then move on to a perhaps bigger trick where yeah. the same sort of thing happens, yeah. yeah, like idea. a big version, like David Regal does a cups and balls where he starts with those little oh, plastic ones, yeah, yeah, yeah. and team. then they're the sort of loads at the end as well. Yeah. It's really cool, and big, I like big, that. Big, full circle. And yeah. maybe that's what that is—a kids prop into something. Maybe. Yeah, maybe. Well, well let's let's, let's do a vote on this. So, what what's um, what, what are you going to go for, Mark? Um, I, I'm ambivalent about it. I'm a, I'm a thumbs to the side. I think in this day and age, you know, it's there isn't a trick that comes out anymore that doesn't have a full performance trailer, pretty much. Yeah. You know, it's, and so people can make their own minds up. Would I do it? It might be one of those things in a year, I'll have a brilliant idea and I'll go, that's what I need, but right now I wouldn't I'll take an idea of the audio transposition, yeah. it's something else, yeah. yeah. But I, I, pro I wouldn't take it round here. I mean, to be fair, I've never changed from doing the same six minutes of tables in five years, so I'm not like uh, suddenly... So it's a thumbs to the side it's, it's a thumbs... It's a, it's a thumbs to the side. <laughs> well, I'm going to give it a thumbs up. I'm going to give it thumbs to the side, I think. Thumbs to the side for me as well. Okay, so um, well, not bad. I think it's a make your make your own mind up, guys. You know what you're getting. If you think it'll fit your style, then, uh, yeah, then we'll, we'll use it. Okay. So, Mark, everyone's got their own go-to trick. What's what's yours? Are we show it to us? I will. It's uh, from your DVD, and uh, I'm just kidding. It's not from your DVD. <laughs> <laughs> from these DVDs. What's from the DVDs? Yeah, I have. You've not watched uh, all of it, have you? Uh, no, I watched it all the way through. Yeah, twice. <laughs> Should we move on? Yeah, let's move on, let's move on. Let's not, there's a joke here. Come on, let's yeah, go on with it. Yeah, if I, like, as you said, if I've only got a really short time with the group, I've got to do one quick trick. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, obviously you guys know I do chop cup a lot, as we mentioned. Yeah. That's probably my opener at most groups. My opening card trick, um, I'll show you now, <laughs> if I can. Uh, it's a trick with a regular deck of cards, all 54 of them. Give those a shuffle if you want it in. Okay. 54, so I did there, I added like 2 it, one like for comic effect for the magicians who know there should only be 52. What about See the what you did then? You couldn't do that when you last filmed. So, uh, it's a trick with the deck cards. They are all different. I want you all to see. I'm going to show these to the camera as well. It's a regular deck. Uh, Jonathan, would you just remember one? Got yep, one? Yep. It's a red card. It is. Uh, it's a heart. It is. We're doing well. Two in a row. I'm going to say that you're <laughs> thinking of a... Um, it's quite a tough one, this. It's a... Uh, I think I've got it. It's an even-numbered card, isn't it? No. Well, this is going to be tough. Um, Jonathan, I'm going to flick down the deck. You just say stop whenever you want. Stop. Jonathan, for the first time, what was the card you were thinking of? It was the Ace of Hearts. The Ace of Hearts. Correct. <laughs> All right, fair enough. Not only did I find it, but if I take it and make it invisible, it jumps under the cup. You no thought way. of a card, Jonathan, it was the two of hearts? Ace of hearts. Oh, ace of hearts, sorry. Pretty lucky for me. No, well, there it is. Excellent. So that's the thought of card and a cup trick. You were going to clap them, weren't you? Well, 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 so was I, actually. Sorry. I don't mind. So, um, <laughs> it's, uh, it's based on Mark Mason's version of Think of a Card. Um, I've added some more sort of surefire aspects of it to make it always work for me. You know, when Mark does it, he ends up, obviously you'll know it's a multiple out sort of trick. Mm. To be honest, 95% of the time for me, it's always the card under the cup. You know, I very rarely get it wrong because of a few different reasons. Um, is this from your Supercharged Classics? It's on Supercharged yeah. Classics yeah. 1, yeah. It's, uh, when Mark did it, there was always a, one of the cards was on the bottom, you know, one of them was the top two, one of them was palmed, etc. Yeah. I didn't like to go that far. So as a quick explanation, obviously, if you want to learn how to do it properly, it's on Supercharged Classics one, which is available from all good magic retailers, including Warped Magic. Yeah, but, uh, as a quick explanation now, I won't go into all the outs, just what sort of happened there with Jonathan. Uh, the deck can be fairly shuffled, it's a regular deck of cards. You go through the deck, and the idea the spectators get is that they could have chosen any card in the deck. That isn't true. It's not a force, but they only get a small section of cards to look at. So you say, you can see they're all different. At the point you ask the spectators to think of a card, Already half of the deck is gone, so that's the first thing. Then you start spreading very slowly, so it's going to look like this. They're all different. Just remember one. 
And at that point, I'm pushing one over at a time. Then I straight away say, have you got one? And by the time I've said, have you got one, only three cards have gone by, and they will say yes. And they'll be thinking of one of those three, four, or five cards, so it'll look like this. You can see the whole deck are different. Just remember one. Got one? Yep. Yeah. Now I can bet it's one of those four. And what I immediately do is cut those to the face, and I say, is it a red card? If they say no, I say they're all red on the back, and I peek this, the world's easiest peek. Um, if they say yes, then I just continue. And I cut those cards back into the middle, and the two of spades is like a key card. Um, the reason I do that is because they thought of the card in the middle, it makes sense that I would look yeah. for it in the middle. It wouldn't make sense to look for it here on the face. So I spread out of the two of spades, which is my key card, um, there it is. And I know they're thinking of one of the cards that's behind the two of spades. And from this point, so uh, let's do it for real now. So I'll do it as if we really do the yeah. trick. Uh, Ian, just remember one? Got one? Yeah, got one. It's a red card? It is. I'm peeking the five of spades. Um, they're all around the back. Ha ha ha. It's a heart as well, right? It is a heart. It is a heart. So now, I've picked the five of spades. I know it's one of those cards. And because of those two questions, I know it's the five of hearts. It's as easy as that. Yeah, if he'd said, no, it isn't a red card, I would know it was one of the black cards, and I would say, oh, it's a spade, for instance. And I would just, it's just deduction like that. It's very easy to get down to being one or two cards when they've only really had five to choose from, but they feel like they had a lot more. At this point, I'll bring the five of hearts to the top of the deck. I will palm it off, and I will say, just say stop. And at that point, I'll add it under the cup take the random card out they stopped at and I do the old 10 vanish where you do this you just mm. let the card fall obviously from the front it looks like you take the card out and it's under the cup easy as that Super. Really nice. obviously there are a lot of different yeah. outs you know if you get the wrong card um, it's easy enough so just name a random card six of diamonds six of diamonds and I look and I know the six of diamonds isn't under the cup and I do the gag the same I go correct anyway for my next trick I'm going to show you and at that point they'll all laugh <laughs> and I bring the six of diamonds to the top and I say not only did I get the six of diamonds under the cup I also changed it into the five of hearts which is a better trick right they laugh and I say okay let's change it back again and that's the thing so even if you totally mess it up yeah, you just find it yeah. do a top change and you're there it's good out as well actually it's still strong isn't it to be honest it's probably sometimes it's a better trick mm. you know if you change it and they see it it gets the same reaction all the time mm. so that's that's think of a card in a cup there are loads and loads of other little tips and things like that to be had and if you really want to do it uh, they're all on the DVD right. and also the original version of that uh, that I took it from is on Mark Mason's Real World Magic DVD, and uh, he took his performance from a guy called uh, Joe, Joe Riding. Riding. Yeah. Joe Riding, who originally concepted the trick, mm. I believe. Mark learned it directly from him, put it on a DVD. I learned it from Mark, changed it a little bit. That's my version. Brilliant. So that's Think of a Card Under Thanks. Cup. Thanks, Mark. Got it. All right. Thank you. Thanks for that, Mark. Over to Gary's final thoughts. Pocket management is of the utmost importance. So thanks very much to our first guest, Mark James. Thank you so much, yeah, Mark. My pleasure. Thanks, thanks a lot, guys. Thanks for inviting me along. It was really cool. Hopefully everyone enjoyed it. Yeah, I hope so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Before we go, though, I can't help but notice, is Ian sitting on some... We're all sitting on chairs, <laughs> but is Ian sitting on something extra? Is he? Uh, well, is he? well, no, it's just a little yeah. cushion. A little cushion. It's a little cushion. <laughs> it's a little cushion. <laughs> look, at the, look at the deck. Yeah. <laughs> look at the sides. <laughs> Ian Moran, he's the Tom Cruise of magic. <laughs> the Tom Cruise of magic, that's right, yeah. 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 Anyway, um, that's, that's it for our first show. Thanks for joining us and hopefully see you again next time. Thanks very much. Thanks a lot. Thanks. See ya. Oh. See ya.